I've always just ignored this starter mix formula, and I figured maybe I should try it because it's probably better than using storm matches. So this is the mix used to initiate the, the combustion of the TPA mix for the XM83 training I'm sorry, I can't say Oh my god. Uh, for the XM83 TPA-based training device used by the military along with the m18 it also uses a base a, a tpa based formula it is not this exact one because each one varies by color but for white this is the formula um but i was like why why have i just ignored this starter mix for the last year and you know i have all these materials with me weirdly stearic acid silicone potassium nitrate charcoal nitrocellulose so what i'm gonna do i'm just i, I was gonna do it anyway so i just figured i'd record it i scaled this per, these percentages down to make 50 grams um so that is going to be let's see here 8.06 grams of silicone which i'm just gonna dump in the pot i'm gonna skip potassium nitrate because that's the oxidizer and if i blend it it could uh just explode um charcoal we have 8.5 grams. That's just air float charcoal, by the way. It's a low quality commercial charcoal. Uh, stearic acid, 10, I'm sorry, 5.3 grams. Um, now with stearic acid, when, you, or, when you, you get it, it's usually granular and spherical. This has to be blended a lot in order to make it into a powder that will work in any of these mixes. I kept on using stearic acid in, in these compositions and I was like why the hell isn't this working and it was just the granule size all right so stearic acid um, all right we're gonna leave out the potassium nitrate and the nitrocellulose on on this formula it's at 4.28 percent now the only way that I have nitrocellulose is in a lacquer so in other words, dissolved in acetone. However, when the acetone dries up, this is nitrocellulose, just straight up. So what I'm gonna do is use, how much did I use? 17.8, God God camera wasn't recording. It's dried way too fast anyway. Um, okay, stand by. I screwed that up. Now listen. The nitrocellulose lacquer, uh, as a binder, is it dries too quickly. I couldn't even embed any fuses in this. It, it was like ready to cure so quickly, or because it, it's so volatile. So I'm gonna reconstitute this um, with methyl ethyl ketone. Don't use methyl ethyl ketone substitute, which you get at Home Depot. Um, they I found this at West Marine, and it was only in incidental find it was not like so i'm because once this evaporates it'll just be gone there's no um i'm not like worried about the the amount here but anyway so methyl ethyl ketone is a controlled is i think that they're, they're they don't sell it because it's it's able to be made into methyl ethyl ketone peroxide very easily, which is an explosive. Um, methyl ethyl ketone is basically a solvent like acetone. It will eventually dissolve this plastic cup that it's in, but I'm hoping to get it out before it does. So I'm gonna just plop this in here. This never completely dried, okay? so. That's why I'm, I was able to reconstitute it. Uh, it's still remaining a little chunky, but it's okay. Is it recording this time? I swear to God. Okay, it's recording. So what I was thinking is I can use this little silicone mold that I had laying around. And I can embed. All right, so I'll fill up these little voids. It's much nicer to work with the MEK. I'm gonna cut a few lengths of different fuses and embed them in here so that it can cure adhered to the fuse. At least
least in theory. All right, so we have time fuse here. I'm gonna cut at an angle. Here. This can go here. So, and sometimes these fuses, the fast burning visco especially, just like, it just creates too much gas, too much, too much ignition gas, um, you know, and it expands and, and launches things out of, uh, you know, blows off caps and stuff of our devices, which sometimes is intentional, but... It'd be nice to have like a gentle, hot, burning, slag creating like mixture. And silicone typically does that, has that kind of behavior. I think silicone is mainly only used for ignition compositions. Needless to say, I ordered some. I was like, hey, I think silicone might be cool. I'm going to order it just in case and I have it on hand. All right, so we have slow burning visco, fast burning visco, slow burning visco, even faster burning visco, and then time fuse. I I would have done all of these in time fuse if I I don't have very much left. And then I also made uh, two little pieces using lamp black. Lamp black is a almost it's almost like a charcoal, but it's it's produced from the soot of burning carbonaceous materials. Um, and in fireworks or pyrotechnics, it's used for basically long duration. So, you know, when, when the, when you watch fireworks and there's those like willow, uh, tree looking ones, they, they like have a long tail that drops down. Lamp black is a slow burning, um, fuel. And I think it'll just be interesting to see how that performs. I was just curious the pieces um, which would theoretically fit inside so this is uh, the 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 beginnings of a body of a um, TPA base um, all right so let's see what else do I have here oh so I did this yeah so you could see how this works here and then I cut off the tube and then that revealed this little cylinder at the end of these time fuse pieces so we're gonna test this we're gonna test this we're gonna test these two blocks here so let's start with the charcoal formula dude that's awesome and the, there's like a little slag it keep, it's like molten it keeps on burning. Very little gas output, which is cool. Wow. And it burns so slow and gentle. So that's awesome. All right, now this is the lamp black one. That was more aggressive. All right, I'm going to do the rest of the testing outside before I hotbox myself. Real quick, before I go outside, I just wanted to show you. I was going to test this fuse here in uh, the XM18 device that um, is sold at ReloadableShells.com. It's designed by a guy named Scott Pace. He is a really intelligent, awesome guy really down to earth um who cnc's his own stuff but this is a reloadable canister and you see the vent holes on top and this threads straight into oh here it is the m228 fuses and uh this device comes with its own fuse and it is able to be used with a small pistol primer 
Um, he has this adapter. Sorry, it's all scuzzy because I've been using it all the time. But this is great for, for me because I can test solution or uh, mixtures with it um, very easily. So we're going to try this. I'm adding this silicone little flap just to test it kind of. I've been toying around with a, adding a silicone valve of some sort to this device. But, um, yeah, you can get these at ReloadableShells.com. Pace Defense. He's got a lot of really cool shit on that website. Um, some crazy stuff that's really fun, for, especially for launchers. So anyway, I'm going to load this up with uh, that TPA mixture in this big bucket that you can't see. I'm just going to scoop it in. <clears throat> and then just screw this... <clears throat> top on so cool such a clever idea and so the reason these are slotted these vent holes are slotted he was telling me that uh, the ATF wanted him to make the holes hard to plug so that somebody couldn't easily convert it into a into a um, destructive device right so it's just a little bit harder for people to convert this you know in other words turn it into a fragmentation device by you know completely um, creating an airtight container all right so i'm going to add the spoon here so yeah that's this is a uh, pace defense the xm18 really cool thing to use it's re totally reusable that's that and then this one is uh, a pull string igniter attached to a time fuse and we're going to be able to test this i'm going to put this on a bench vise and just so we can see it up close how it works with the time fuse and then this will be um, testing its ability to ignite the tpa formula all right Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. Honestly, even that small device would be an effective screening tool. In this, I mean, this is a perfect example.